Welcome to the GTN Show, brought to you by Amp Human. Well, we've always known that triathletes are incredibly strong athletes across all three disciplines. However, thanks to some recent virtual reality racing, we now have some evidence that will quite likely make our friends over at GCN squirm a little, as a triathlete has just beaten a load of pro cyclists. Yes, Mark's going to be chatting a little more about that. We've also got some tech news for you, some brand signings, and some results from some virtual reality triathlon racing, as well as plenty of photos from you you guys and the pros sharing your various training home setups. Well, hello, time for me to step in and update you on some of the action from the weekend. And Lionel Sanders has really given us something to talk about here today because we all know him for his indoor training and doing countless hours on Swift. Well, that seems to have all paid off. On the weekend, on Sunday, he was invited to compete for the e-racing team Canyon ZCC in the Ronde Von Swift against some of the biggest names in cycling, including also our GCN presenters Cy Richardson and Connor Dunn. Now, this took place on Zwift over the UCI World Championship course, the Richmond course, with that infamous Cobbled Hill climb. It was a 27.6 kilometer course, three laps, and when I say some of the biggest names I really mean it I mean we had none other than Matthew van der Poel and some of his other team members um, in the Alps and Phoenix team and a number of Zwift specialists but that didn't seem to deter Lionel he was right in the mix in fact in the last half or maybe in the last third he was the one that actually initiated a breakaway two others joined him initially a fourth came with them soon after and then Lionel then went on to break away from that breakaway group. He managed to open up around 20 seconds on the main group and in doing so laid down a five minute power of 534 watts. He said that's his all time best for five minutes. It looked like he was going to comfortably have it at one point. Obviously he was still having to work hard for it but Samuel Branland came in with an almighty attack in the closing stages and very close to catching Lionel but it was Lionel that took the win. Samuel Branland took second and actually Actually, Matthew van der Poel finished outside the top 10. Eat that, cyclists. And I'm not finished there because Lionel has provided us with more entertainment and more to talk about, but this time between himself and pro triathlete Sam Long for a Strava KOM at Mount Lemon in Tucson, Arizona. Now Lionel has long been heading to Tucson, Arizona for stints of training and more latterly he's been going for months prior to the race season to get himself fit and ready. And each time he's there, it seems that he gives it a crack at Mount Lemon, which is a pretty punchy climb. It's around 45 kilometers long. This year though, on March the 17th, he went after the current K1, which was held by Phil Gaiman, the former pro cyclist, and he beat it by two minutes. That was for the Mount Lemon official KOM. He then continued on for the slightly longer one and also beat that by two minutes, taking also from Phil Gaiman. But then step in Sam Long. Now, straight off the back almost of doing a 250 kilometer ride, he gave it a crack himself. And I've got his stats here. Now he did this on March the 24th. He pushed 403 watts. He is slightly heavier than Lionel Sanders and stopped the clock in one hour and 16 minutes and 48 seconds, which puts him around 30 seconds behind Sanders. But given that he had 250 miles in his legs, I'd say that's pretty impressive. And we could speculate he might have beat Lionel had he not had that in his legs. Now, I don't know, we're just throwing that out there, just a bit of fun given there's no racing going on at the moment. But should Kona go ahead, Sam has actually already qualified for that. And that could be quite fun to see the two of them together battling out on the bike, showing I mean, at the moment, they're pretty closely matched. Um, but that has um, brought us onto the poll now. And I'm actually going back to our previous discussion about the Zwift racing with Lionel being on the UCI World Championship course with some of the best pro cyclists in the world. We're asking you, would Lionel win the same cycling race in real life? Simple yes or no, you can enter that just up here. And now on to last week's poll, we asked you which sessions do you fancy doing? And this was with regards to our 5K challenge. Um, um, low volume, high intensity and high volume, low intensity. Heather's currently doing the high volume, low intensity myself, low volume, high intensity. And the scores are in low 
intensity high volume or high volume low intensity came in with 32 percent and probably not really a surprise to either of us high volume or sorry low volume high intensity 68 percent thanks guys it's now time for try news and today i thought i'd start things off with a new brand signing from none other than the ironman world champion jan fredeno well a few months ago we mentioned how his relationship with shoe brand asics came to an end after 17 years and there's been a bit of speculation since and he's posted a few posts with you know, a bit of an elusive question of who it might be and it had all sorts of people speculating but i think it ended up being a bit of a surprise for quite a few of us because this post last week on his Instagram confirmed after all the speculation I'm excited to finally share with you that Hoka One One are my new running shoe partner. Well quite exciting to see Yang go for something very different to what he was running in. We saw him run in a prototype for ASICS when he won the Ironman World Champs just last year and it's going to be interesting to see if Hoka grows even more. They actually topped the shoe count in Kona back in 2017 and 2018. There wasn't an official shoe count in 2019 but I think we're going to see more of those shoes coming into triathlon when you've got the likes of the current world champion wearing them. Well, jumping back over to ASICS, they're obviously based in Tokyo in Japan, so have been hit quite badly by the coronavirus situation, although they didn't want to halt their lease of some new shoes. So they had to think outside the box a little bit. And instead of obviously inviting journalists and people over to try their new shoes for a big press launch, they decided to send them virtual reality headsets that were already loaded with the lab demonstration of these shoes. And apparently you got this headset, you just had to charge it up and then you were in this virtual reality room where you'll be able to look around at the shoes. Obviously, you're not going to be able to touch them or actually put them on your feet. But to make it even more real, they got the journalists or the people who receive these headsets to actually take part in some of the action. So they launched three new shoes. It's the Meta Racer, the Meta Sprint and the Meta Rise. It's great to see ASICs actually thinking outside the box and being innovative with still being able to launch their shoe and get people involved. Even if it is a slightly different way and you still don't get to sort of physically see or feel the shoe, it gives you as much of an idea, I guess, as is possible in this situation. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that we're seeing more and more triathlon events being postponed, being cancelled, and that date actually going further and further into the future. Well, World Triathlon have actually extended their period for suspension of events up until the 30th of June, and that's going to include having to move the ITU World Series that was going to be held in Yokohama in the middle of May. And I'm sure we're going to see more dates actually being changed as a result of the coronavirus. However, on the flip side, there is some actual race news that's happening at the moment. We talked a couple of weeks ago about the new launch from Ironman of their virtual reality racing and their virtual reality club. Well, last weekend saw the first live racing happen. It was a half Ironman and it was open to age group athletes and to pros. And it was free to enter open to absolutely anybody but the pros were actually selected so they had four women racing and four men racing in the women's race they had Angela Nath, Jocelyn McCauley, Rina Carfrey and Jeannie Seymour well it started off as a rather close race for the women but then Rinnie Carfrey was in a great place things went a little bit pear-shaped and it's got on a little viral you might have seen that due to her husband apparently trying to rearrange some trophies to give her that extra bit of incentive that momentum helping her get through the tough bit on the bike he's bringing them into her room or the pain cave that she was actually doing the race and managed to knock out the cable from the turbo and basically taking her out of the race uh, she posted here uh, might take a few more days to forgive tony try for the colossal stuff up of all the things that could have gone wrong uh, kicking the cord was definitely not on our radar regardless though a really nice way to connect with the iron man community well it was justin mccauley who ended up winning angela nath was in second two minutes behind and then Jeannie Seymour third with Marinda Carfrey as an unofficial fourth and the men's race was won by Patrick Langer back on top of the podium you could say he had over a four minute win over Justin Metzler in second Bradley Weiss in third and Joe Gambles in fourth. And the results for the age group athletes were also up online. You had until the end of the weekend to upload your results. And it didn't have to be in that particular order. You just had to cover each of those distances. And if you missed last weekend, there is a chance to race again this Easter weekend. So you've got plenty of time to get it done. And it is a base of the 5150 format. So basically the Olympic distance. It's got a 3K run, a 40K bike and a 10K run. So maybe a bit more manageable for you to sign up and have a go.
Well, now time for some tech news, and I've got some exciting tech releases for you. Starting here with one that's released at the end of last week from Zip. It's their new Zip VUCA Shift Axis 90. It's a set of error bar extensions, but in all honesty, a lot more than just a set of error bar extensions because they not only include the shifters in there, but some electronics and the brain. So should you have SRAM Axis ETAP on your bike, both front and rear mech, and these aero bars, that is essentially all you'll need. Those aero bars will be able to operate that front and rear mech. No need for cables, no need for a blip box. So anyone that has a TT bike and has ever had to route cables through them will know just how much of a godsend this product could possibly be. Now the extensions themselves are actually the Pro Proven VUCA EVO extensions. They've got a 90 mil rise in them and apparently compatible with more or less all aero bars or aero bar extensions and integrated cockpits out there. Um, they weigh in at just 390 grams. They're 410 mil in length, um, and, but obviously that can be adapted to whatever length you need and trimmed at both the top and the bottom. Um, additionally, they've also got a computer mount built into them. And not only do they come with the clicks for the end of the aero bars, but also for the base bar too. And that comes in all at $850 or 750 pounds. And SRAM have been busy. They've just announced their new shift buttons, the multi-clicks that can control their wireless ETAP systems. Now, these are a little bit similar to the blips in that they can be placed anywhere on the handlebars, both road bars or TT bars, and basically give you endless positions for shifting from. Um, a little bit like the blips, they do need to be plugged in on the handlebar regions so that can either be into the brake levers, into the blip box, or into the error bars I just discussed. Um, but unlike the blips though, the idea with these they've got a slightly different design to them the blips they go under the handlebar tape the clicks or the multi-clicks the idea here is that they protrude out so you'd actually wrap the bar tape around them so I guess just suiting different people's needs and preferences now these come in at $120 or 115 pounds and we're not finished there yet on the releases because I have this here as you can see there it is from Celitalia I am gonna give you a quick glimpse, but only a quick glimpse because I'm gonna be doing an unboxing on this very soon. But given that has just come out, I thought I'd run through a few features from it. And this is actually being designed in collaboration with Patrick Langer and the BMC VFit Pro Triathlon team. It is the new Watt saddle from Cell Italia. We actually bumped into Patrick Langer when we were out in Lanzarote last year as he was out riding with the Cell Italia team. So we suspect he was probably testing the saddle and developing it at the time. I'll give you a couple of features on this, although obviously in more detail soon in the unboxing. It's get, got a longer saddle rail on it, 10 mil longer in fact, so it allow you just to um, a more variety of positions or to push the positions further forward or back. It's got a 50 mil nose, so they've widened the nose. Um, it's got a grippy material cover on it to stop you from slipping. Um, they've also changed the shape of it so I believe so you can sit further back on it for optimum position um, and also it's got a rubber insert for when you're racking your bike in transition. Um, now it's also available in two versions so you've got the Watt Kit Carbonio Superflow, it's got a carbon rail that weighs just 200 grams, 239 pounds 90 and then we've also got the Watt Gel Superflow more or less the same design, titanium rail. It's got gel inside for added comfort, particularly towards the front. And that weighs in at 235 grams and that costs 159 pounds 90. Obviously there is so much more to tell you about with this saddle, we just have to wait for the proper unboxing. All right, you might be wondering what's going on here, but I am modeling your giveaway. Yeah, we have got some exciting giveaway products for you today coming from our channel partner, ASOS. I am modeling the Mille GT Climber Jacket and here I have the Uma GT Climber Jacket. The Mille being for the men, the Uma for the women. I will get this one out in a second. Now, admittedly, you may not be thinking of these kind of products right now given the current situation we're all in. But once we ride this one out, and once we're out the other side, which hopefully we all do and fairly soon, these are going to be perfect, especially given the seasons that many of us are going into right now. Now, this jacket is kind of unusual, but maybe perfect because it sits somewhere between the rain jacket and the wind jacket, which I can definitely confirm. It's kind of neither of those. It's a little bit too thick for a wind jacket and 
probably not quite thick enough for a full-blown rain jacket, um, but definitely feels water resistant. It's actually a really clever construction. It's their new fabric, the Silver Haze. It's a two-layer construction. It's made up of a mesh that's then bonded to a hydrophilic membrane. And within that membrane, it's also got reflective properties, which you can probably see from the light right now. I am lighting up like a Christmas tree almost. Um, in here, I'll pull out the women's one so I can display things a bit better for you. So it's the, got a pink design on this one. Um, it's also got a stretchy side panel. So also when you're getting into different bike positions and whatnot, um, just for added comfort. We've also got this flap on the back here. So if you do want to get into your pockets on your jersey that's underneath, you can access that nice and easily. We've got a nice high collar on it. It's actually, it's a lovely fit, really is a lovely fit. And we have two of each of these to give away in your size and color. If you want to enter into that giveaway, just head down to the link just, just below this video in the description. Best of luck to you. We're now time for me to take a look through all the photos that you have been sending in to us and you have not disappointed lately. Considering the times that we're all going through right now, you've been sending loads in. So thank you ever so much. Please keep them coming. This first one is from Jan and this is from Nor Norderstedt in Germany. It's actually of his friend's bike, not his own. Mario Zaka said he got inspired by all the new bikes online, didn't want to buy a new one, so he invested um, some time into making something for his bike. He's always in need of salt, so he made an aero lightweight storage system for that. And yeah, he really has. Out of carbon fiber as well. I I imagine he's made that from scratch rather than nick something off a previous bike and cut a hole in it. So if you've made that from scratch, fair play to you. That is fantastic and nicely situated on the stem, so easy access, position behind the aero bar, aero bottle, so nice and aero. Good work. Next one from Craig Edinburgh said, things are getting desperate. Yes, they are, Craig. <laughs> um, next one from Tony and from his basement. Nothing more than that, just his basement. Um, but thanks for sending it in. He said, forced to work from home means turning my pain cave into a work cave. Now I feel pain in a different way. Well, hopefully you're getting some work done and you're not just sat on your bike all day or you could try doing both at once, trying to be efficient with your time. It probably wouldn't be very efficient, um, but worth a go. Why not? Let us know how you get on with that, Tony. Uh, next one from Grayson, and this is from Houston in Texas, said, quarantine survival guide, your bike, um, your turbo trainer, GTN live sessions, and a rooftop pain cave. Good going, and thanks for getting involved in the GTN live sessions. If you haven't yourself, we've got them every Tuesday and Thursday. Bike on Tuesday, run on Thursday. Get yourself involved. They're in the evening um, for British time and the British summer time at the moment. Um, so yeah, have a look on our social media and online and get involved. We'd love to have more of you along. Um, next one from Alex, and this is from Plymouth in the UK. He said his dog is finding it hard going with this lockup and does not understand why I spend so much time in the garage. Um, but yeah, that is a fantastic pain cave, by the way. I don't know if that's new or you're still working on it, but it looks brilliant. Um, I'm very, very envious. I wish I had that much space. Um, it looks like you can do so much in there. Um, but please do keep sending in all your photos and videos. Let us know what you're getting up to if you're having to improvise and do something wacky at the moment to try and keep yourself fit. Send them in using our photo uploader that is on screen right now. You'll find the link in the description below. Well, we are all in this together and that includes the pros. You might have seen our video that went out a few days ago just showing how the pros are coping. If not, go and check that one out. But we've got a few more clips from some of the pros just giving us a little insight into their own home training setups. Hi guys, Sam Appleton here. Hope everyone's staying safe in these crazy times. Um, yeah, I'm just coming here to tell you what I've been up to. Uh, I've been training indoors as much as I can. Fortunately, I got a treadmill um, about two months ago before everything escalated. So that's been a nice addition to have. I've been riding indoors as much as possible on Zwift, trying to get closer to that level 50, which is taking quite a while. So now I typical day involves every morning I start with a good quality bike workout. I mix it between sessions written by my coach and then days I just go on Swift and do some of the events and races just to keep things interesting and yeah just to try new things and then I also managed to get a very cheap treadmill so 
I try and maintain some sort of running shape using that in the afternoon and some swimming bands. But now my main focus is on the bike. Uh, I accept that my triathlon overall fitness will deteriorate right now, but I can always get that back. Right now, I'm just focusing on what I can control and improving my bike. It's always been a weakness, so I'm using this time in quarantine to sort of really focusing on that. Yeah, we're trying to make the best of the situation. Of course, swimming is the biggest challenge. Um, I'm, I am training on um, like an indoor swim machine and doing a lot of um, core training and athletics. <laughs> yeah, sorry for <laughs> interruption. Of course, skating would be a good way to replace swimming as well. But I think, yeah, it's it's just not the same and I really have to admit that I miss swimming a lot. Uh, just to give you a bit of an update on the coronavirus status right here. It's slightly different from the rest of the world and rest of Europe even. Uh, we have been affected, of course, uh, not to the extent of Italy or France or Spain. Um, and we also have a slightly less strict policy here. Uh, Sweden, the, it's not the politicians making uh, the decisions here, it's the Ministry of Health who calls all the guidelines and all the rules. Uh, they seem to have a little bit more relaxed and a lot of own personal responsibility uh, in their guidelines. Swedes are, as some of you people know, we are we like our social distance, uh, we have a lot of space. Uh, we tend to spread out even if you're queuing to the bus normal rush hour, we already have like two meters between us. So I think the government has calculated that we will be able to handle this without having lockdowns or um, having too many rules in how to how people should live. Uh, we have a lockdown for to visit older people. Um, year 10, 11, 12 are not in school anymore, but the rest of the schools are open, the gyms are open and the swimming pools are open. Therefore, my training is actually not that different from what it's been before. I'm swimming the pool. I barely like want to tell people this because I feel a bit awkward because the rest of the world is shut down. Uh, we're only allowed to shower two at a time. Uh, and normally once I'm finished, I go straight home so I don't spend too much time in the changing rooms. On top of those, I spotted a few posts on social that I wanted to share with you. Some of them fun, some of them a little, well, quite tough to be honest. I'm going to start off with this one from Non Stanford. Now, she's actually flown out to Australia to be with her fiance, Aaron Royal. And once she got to Australia, she had to be quarantined for 14 days. But once that's over, hopefully she'll be able to get outside and train or at least live a relatively slightly more normal life in this current situation. And there's other athletes who are having to adapt and maybe having a bit of fun with it. There's one post here which really caught my eye from Nikki Bartlett. I think this is brilliant. She, um, um, is basically dressed up as a Spider-Man going to do some of her runs. And this isn't some kind of way of protecting herself from coronavirus, of not touching gates because she's got gloves on. It's just to try and have a bit of fun and lighten the mood. And at the moment when she posted this in the UK, you were still allowed to go out and do your one portion of exercise a day. So she was sticking to the rules, but just trying to make people smile and make herself smile a bit. So I really like that. And then this one here from Imogen Simmons, who does a lot of her training in Thailand, has actually come back to Switzerland and she's been training in Lake Geneva and I cannot imagine how cold it is with the runoff from the mountains. She does say though that she has a very thick thermal wetsuit, a vest, gloves, the cap and booties and recommends not trying it unless you've got all the gear. But it just goes to show that every one of us is having finding ways to adapt and to try and just keep our lives as normal as we can and also keep ourselves smiling. So it's great to see that everyone really using their imagination. We're now time for the caption competition. Your chance to win a cap with the winning caption. Now, last week's photo was from Malulaba World Cup, and it seems like that's probably the last race for a while that we'll have caption comp photos coming from. Um, but we had some great captions coming in from this brilliant photo. Um, Yui Kretzka, Kretzma said, everyone was kung fu fighting. Um, Ian Jones said, it's that way to the gym. Uh, DW personal training, aka a yeah. Anyway, um, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle. Um, Vincent Weeder said, "Break a leg." 
Um, and then Matthew Faith, you are the winner, or Matthew Fath, sorry, I should say. Come on, everyone, and do the new dance. It's called ITU. I like it. It's good. It's good. Anyway, you're the winner of the caption comp this week. Now for this week's caption comp photo, we've had to go all the way back through the archive for this. As I've said, there's no races now. So I've gone back to 2008, Ironman New Zealand, and this is Joanna Lorne as she comes across the line to a sixth consecutive title at Ironman New Zealand. And you've got to admit, it does look like she might be getting strangled there and panicking. Look, I'm sure she is just very excited, but Come on, you got to admit. Anyway, leave your captions in the comments section below this video. Um, but that is it for the show this week. Thanks ever so much for joining Heather and myself. We've got loads more coming up on the channel. We've got an update on our 5K challenge that hopefully some of you have got involved in too. That's coming up this weekend, along with our cushion shoes making you injured a bit of an investigation into that also don't forget that we've got our live workouts on the channel heather's is tomorrow so make sure you get involved in that we've got a run along with her then my next one will be on tuesday on the bike you can follow both of them on youtube live they're taking place in the evening british time and we've also got some indoor training bundles available for you on the gtn shop both for men and for women the links are below this video in the description but make sure you head on over to the shop and check them out because they are fantastic and they've been going down really well um, if you have enjoyed the video today make sure you give it a like and don't forget to follow gtn on social media